Hello, so my name is Nicola. I am a clinical lecturer in um, cancer, and that basically means I spend two and a half days a week working clinically over at St James's, and two and a half days carrying out research. Um, as Ellie said, my research interest is in teenage and young adult cancers, and I focus um, specifically on acute and long-term toxicities of chemotherapy, and I use existing healthcare data to investigate. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about one of my projects, which is how young people's kidneys are affected by chemotherapy. And this project is funded by the TIAC charity, and the data that we've used has been funded by the Candle Writers charity. I'm going to go through how the kidneys are affected by cancer, why this is particularly a, young, uh, a problem in our young patients, and how we're using existing healthcare data to look at this, and a bit about what we've found so far. So the kidneys are an important organ in the body. They help eliminate waste, they maintain a healthy balance of fluid and salts, and they also have important um, roles in controlling blood pressure and bone health. From a cancer point of view, they can be affected in a number of ways. The cancer itself can cause obstruction or um, directly damage the kidneys themselves. The chemotherapy we can give can be directly toxic or through side effects such as inducing extensive vomiting or um, infections. The medicines that we give to treat the side effects can also be toxic, such as some antibiotics and some painkillers we might give. And we know that the contrast that we give for scans can also affect the kidneys. In young people, this is even more important. We know that many of the chemotherapy agents we use are very toxic to the kidneys, so drugs such as methotrexate and iphosphamide. The evidence, as is a commonly occurring theme in teenage cancers, is limited. And it tends to focus more on the um, severe end of the spectrum, so patients who die because of kidney problems, or patients who need dialysis. And what we're more interested in is that middle ground, where it causes chronic health um, problems that can interfere with an individual's quality of life. We need, in order to give treatment, we need to have a certain level of function with the kidneys because we need to know that it's going to be safe to deliver it and to execute <coughs> the chemotherapy. So when the kidneys are affected, we might be able to give less, which means which can have an overall effect on survival. As I've mentioned, kidney damage can impact on survivorship, causing problems such as high blood pressure, which can lead to an increased risk of stroke or heart disease. And there's some suggestion that the way that we measure kidney injury is limited in young people, and that's to do with the period of transition that they're going through physiologically, such as puberty, and also because of the, the body composition, so changes in fat in these patients. So we um, developed this project with the aim of identifying which patients are at greatest risk of developing a kidney injury, how it progresses, so the time from the initial injury occurring during treatment to becoming a chronic health problem later on, and what the best way of detecting kidney injury in our young people is. Oops. So as I mentioned, I use data in my research. Well, what is data? It sounds really, really boring, and if 10 years ago someone had said that's what I'd be doing with my time, I wouldn't have believed them. But there's so much potential for cancer research in data. It's information that's collected in everyday routine practice in the NHS. So every x-ray you have, every time you visit your GP, every prescription you get, it's all stored, along with every blood test. Because it's routinely collected, it's already there, so we don't have to design trials or spend a lot of money um, collecting the data. Also, because it's collected in all our patients, it gives us a population level of um, kind of information, not just people who are eligible for clinical trials. The research team that I work in is the Yorkshire Specialist Register of Cancer in Children and Young People, and I do keep on saying that we need a new name because it's just too long. So we, the core data that we collect is related to the patient and their cancer, so how old they are at diagnosis, where the cancer is, how far it spread when they were diagnosed and how aggressive it was. Um, and then patient data, um, sorry, the cancer data, so we then link it, which basically just means join, to national data sources and regional data sources. So national ones include information on outpatient clinics attended and hospital admissions. And this gives us an insight into acute toxicities, which mean they've had to come and be an inpatient, and also longer toxicities that have needed specialist outpatient follow-up. 
we collect data on the treatment, so all the radiotherapy, the surgery and chemo they've had, and also we collect data on mental health outcomes, which is an important um, topic to look at in our young people because they can obviously be impacted by both the cancer and their treatment. The regional data that we link to is that held in the Leeds Teaching Hospitals Trust, and this includes data on patient data on patient reported outcomes. So these are self-reported quality of life measures during treatment. We also link to the electronic patient records here, which basically hold everything you could you could want. So blood tests, investigations such as blood pressures taken, or prescribed to anything they've ever had given to them whilst they were in any patient here at Leeds. Um, teaching hospitals and also of any scans or x-rays that they've had. And what isn't included in here is the new data that we're looking to source and this ranges from education data so we can follow up our patients and see how their long-term education and outcomes have been affected by cancer and treatment. We're looking at getting maternity data so we can see how it affects a patient's fertility, their fertility further down the line and also looking at uh, linking some genomic data as well. So you can get a whole picture of a patient in data. So what do we do with this data once we've got it? We carry out, carry out epidemiological studies which describe patterns of cancer over time, so how survival rates are changing, how the number of patients being diagnosed are changing. And we can also look deeper into this to see if there's any patient groups who maybe aren't um, getting the same survival improvements as other groups, so we can help direct our research questions. <coughs> And we also look at long-term outcomes such as late effects. So this um, project is focusing on kidney injury, but we've also looked at respiratory problems, heart problems. And just, I just want to say what we also do with the data is follow strict data protection regulations. And this um, governs what data we store, where we store it, how we use it, and who has access to it. And we never share or publish anything identifiable, which might put a patient at risk. And it's just important to kind of point that out because there's a lot of mistrust in data use of secondary to um, negative reporting in the media. We did a, um, a piece of work with carers and young people um, to look at how we communicate what we do to improve our research practice and they gave us advice on what we present to patients and how we uh, on our patient information leaflets and things like that. And it also helped us to revise our research priorities and one of these um, areas of importance was on late effects. Which brings me back nicely to the renal project. So we linked data from this awful looking building called the Worsley Building here at the university <laughs> to the lovely looking Bexley Wing. Um, and we got a total of 8,601 patients and of these 4,800 Eight had had a evidence of having a kidney injury, and this was in predefined blood levels. This gave us a huge data set of basically everything you could want to know on these patients. And to give you an example, there's over 36,000 cycles of chemotherapy have been prescribed in this, this patient group. So far, we've found that males are more likely to develop kidney injury than females. Patients aged 24 to 29 years when they're receiving chemotherapy are at higher risk compared to those who were 13 to 16 or 16 to 23. Patients of black ethnicity are more likely to develop kidney injury, but there was no difference in the level of deprivation that a patient was born into. Certain cancer types were more at risk, including leukemias, urinary tract cancers, head and neck and germ cell tumors, and this isn't really surprising given we know the drugs that are delivered in these two cancer types. So again, the type of chemotherapy received had a huge impact, as did having any infection during treatment. But when did we start to see the injury occurring? Well, only 21 days after chemotherapy, so it's happening early, within the first cycle of chemotherapy, and that's about 68 days after diagnosis. But in terms of when this becomes a problem for our patients and they start to develop chronic health problems, that hasn't been as easy to pull out and we're still really teasing that out so that we know when that patient start to develop health problems. And that's really important because we hope to find a window where we can inter intervene and give them some perhaps some medications that can stop it happening earlier. And in terms of how we detect it, well that needs a whole other research project so we're putting together a new grant to look at that in more detail. 
So in summary, I just hope I've given you an indication of how amazing data actually is and how we can use it in research. The parts of you that involve in young people and their families though in deciding what we do with the data and how we use it and giving you an example of how we can maximise the long-term health of our patients.